Good evening. You're watching Express News with me, Deepika. Your daily half an hour into that brings you 100 news and updates from the country and the world in just 30 minutes. Let's begin. In an exclusive interview to an Indian news agency, Prime Minister Narendra Modi recalled U.S. President Joe Biden, Saudi Crown Prince Bin Salman handshake and proving the Western media naysayers wrong for a joint G20 declaration. PM Modi said that Elon Musk is a supporter of him and basically he is a supporter of India. He says he wants him to invest in India. Prime Minister Narendra Modi further added that his aim is to increase the speed and the scale of development in the country in the next term. Prime Minister Narendra Modi also reiterated that viewing India as different units is a result of mindlessness regarding India. Election Commission of India said that the enforcement agencies have made a record seizure of over 4,650 crore rupees before the first phase of polling on the 19th of April. Spearheading the campaign, India's Prime Minister and BJP senior party leader Narendra Modi is on a visit to southern state of Kerala and Tamil Nadu. Addressing a rally in Palakkad in Kerala, Prime Minister Narendra Modi said BJP has released the vision of Vikas and Virasat for the next five years. Congress leader Rahul Gandhi held a roadshow in Vainat. He is contesting the 2024 elections from Vainat. Indian Home Minister and senior party leader Amit Shah is in the country's northeast states of Tripura, Manipur, where he is holding public rallies. India's Defence Minister Rajnath Singh also held a public rally in the Union territory of Jammu and Kashmir. BJP National President J.P. Nadda held a public rally at Mussoorie in the northern hilly state of Uttarakhand. Congress Party's President Malik Arjun Kharge held a campaign in Puducherry in support of Puducherry Lok Sabha candidate V. Vatalingam. BSP Chief Mayavati also held a public meeting at Muradabad in Uttar Pradesh. In a press briefing, Congress's General Secretary in charge of communications, Jairam Ramesh, said that their party is ready to contest and their campaign is based on the five pillars of justice. While addressing a BJP press conference in India's IT hub, Bengaluru, senior BJP leader Dr. S. Jay Shankar said that the manufacturing sector had been neglected until 2014 and a lot has been done till today to increase manufacturing sales. Multiple police forces have been deployed in the Naxal Hit area in Kachiroli district of Western State, Maharashtra, to conduct safe and peaceful elections. In Jammu and Kashmir, special teams in Kathua ensured accessible voting for all by visiting homes of voters opting for postal ballots. India's Vice President Jagdeep Thankar attended the valediction ceremony of the 76th batch of the Indian Revenue Service or IRS at the National Academy of Direct Taxes in Nagpur. Addressing the event, the Vice President said that country's tax system has been transformed from tax collectors to tax facilitators. He further added that the world is changing at an incredible speed. India's Minister of External Affairs discussed the West Asia situation with counterparts of Israel and Iran and sought safe release of 17 Indian sailors aboard a ship that was seized by the Iranian military. The Indian market ended in red on Monday. Sensex declined 845.12 points to settle at 73,399.78. Nifty dipped 246.9 points to 22,272.5. Indian rupee falls 7 paise to settle at 83.45 against the US dollar. 
Gold future maturing on the 5th of April stood at 72,095 rupees per 10 grams on Multi Commodity Exchange of India Limited. Silver futures maturing on the 3rd of May stood at 83,730 rupees per kilogram on the MCX. Asian shares slumped and gold prices rose on Monday after Iran's attack on Israel on Saturday stoked fears of a wider regional conflict and kept traders on an edge. MSCI's protest index of Asia-Pacific shares outside Japan fell by 0.7%. Japan's Nikkei slid more than 1%. Hong Kong's Hang Seng Index slumped 0.8%. The escalating tensions also sparked a flight to safety that sent gold rising 0.51% to $2,356.39 an ounce. Brent crude futures peaked at $92.18 a barrel last week, which is the highest level since October. S&P 500 futures and Nasdaq futures each rose 0.15%. Tensions continue to rise in West Asia as Israel maintains its high alert status in the aftermath of the 13th of April attack by Iran. Global leaders have criticized the Iranian attack and urged Israel to show restraint. Amid escalating situation in the Middle East, G7 leaders held a video meeting to debate Iran's attack on Israel on Sunday. Condemning Iran's unprecedented attack against Israel, U.S. President Joe Biden pledged a coordinated G7 diplomatic response to the attacks. President Emmanuel Macron on Monday also said that France will do all it can to avoid further escalation in conflict between Israel and Iran in Middle East. UK's Foreign Secretary David Cameron urged Israel not to retaliate after Iran's drone and missile attack. Cameron also said that while a response is justified from Israel, it should think with head as well as heart because Tehran's strike had been a near total failure. Top leaders and diplomats from France, Germany and the European Union met in Paris on Monday to discuss the Sudan crisis as the conflict in the region marks one year. The leaders pushed for more funding for Sudan on Monday when they meet in Paris to mark the first anniversary of the conflict erupting. United Nations has also called for greater humanitarian assistance to aid refugees and displaced people fleeing Sudan, what has now become for its largest displacement crisis. The New South Wales government in Australia announced that it would give $12 million for an independent col colonial inquest into the Sydney shopping centre stabbing attack. The incident left six people dead. The attacker was killed by an officer on the site. Police ruled out ideology as motive, stating that he had mental health issues in the past. However, they said he may have targeted women. Russia on Sunday hit several Ukrainian military targets that included air defense systems and munition depots. Ukraine attacked positions of Russian soldiers and military equipment the same day. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky has said his country needed help from its allies to repel threats from the air. He reiterated his call for the U.S. Congress to approve a vital aid package that has been blocked by political unrest. U.S. Ambassador to the United Nations Linda Thomas-Greenfield met with South Korea's Defense Minister Shin won sik on Monday in Seoul. The two discussed policy towards North Korea, Seoul's amid concern that Pyongyang may now advance its weapons program even more. Philippine President Ferdinand Marcos Jr. said on Monday that the trilateral agreement signed between his country, U.S. and Japan, was now not directed at anyone. It is strengthening of relations between the three. Singapore Prime Minister Lee Hsien Loong announced on Monday that he will hand over power to his successor, Lawrence Wong, on the 15th of May. 
The statement was on the website of Prime Minister's office and Lee called the leadership transition as a significant moment. Lawrence Wong is currently serving as the Deputy Prime Minister. First ever criminal trial of a former U.S. president is due to get underway on Monday with Donald Trump facing fraud charges in New York. The case revolves around hush money payments he allegedly made to an adult star to cover up an affair. Trump denies the charges, but the trial could have a major impact on his re-election bid. North Korea marked 112th birth anniversary of the state's founder Kim Sung II with a massive dance party and fireworks on Sunday night. Russia's southern Ural region and northern Kazakhstan have been hit with the worst flooding in living memory as large snowfalls melted swiftly amid heavy rain. In Kazakhstan, authorities on Monday said that more than 108,000 people have been evacuated since floods first began last month. In Russia, almost 13,000 people were evacuated in Kurgan region due to floods as the Topol River burst its banks due to meltwater. 18 people were killed in landslides on Indonesia's Sulawesi Island. A local authorities confirmed this on Monday. Rescue efforts for two missing people is still ongoing. Local government in the South Sulawesi also reported that two people were in a critical condition in the hospital. Earlier high-intensity rain and landslide complicated emergency efforts. An earthquake of magnitude 6.2 struck New Britain region in Papua New Guinea on Monday. No threats of tsunami was reported. The earthquake was at a depth of 79 kilometers. The German Research Center for Geosciences said Papua New Guinea sits on the Pacific Ring of Fire, the arc of seismic falls around the Pacific Ocean where much of the world's earthquakes and volcanic activity occurs. IMG has predicted above normal rainfall for the country and released long-range forecasts for southwest monsoon 2024. The 2024 southwest monsoon season rainfall from June to September over the country as a whole is most likely to be above normal. Director Guy Ritchie has set out to entertain audiences and himself and discuss and crew with his latest movie called The Ministry of Ungentlemanly Warfare, which is inspired by a real one-of-a-kind World War II mission. In Cuba, animal rights activists held a traditional pilgrimage of the country's Day of Dog on Sunday. They demanded stricter legislation to combat animal cruelty. Participants demanded legal reforms to address the alarming cases of animal mistreatment, which is rampant in the region. Pelomi Nubi became the first woman to complete a road trip from London to Lagos. The journey spanned 68 days and crossed 16 countries, including the Sahara. The Nigerian women took the initiative to promote a safe and borderless Africa. She utilized a small peer vehicle to arrive at Africa's largest economy. Recently, 22 new caves were discovered in Vietnam's Chuang Pen and an additional three caves were surveyed, totaling over 3,500 meters in length. The discovery was the result of a collaborative cave exploration expedition between United Kingdom and Vietnamese cave experts. In Japan's Hokkaido, 150 people came together for a walk event during a snowy day. It is the first time in five years that the event has been held in the UNESCO World Natural Heritage Site of Shirotoku. A fashion show of the Korean traditional attire, Hanbok, was held as a part of Key Culture Festival in Dubai. A new kind of Hanbok fused with Arab culture was also introduced at the event. The cultural crossover saw hijab, a head covering for Arab women, reborn in Korean style. The theme for this fashion show is the Kyok that blossomed in the desert. 
Koreans engaged in the Gijisi Tug of War Festival, a 500-year traditional on Sunday. Tradition on Sunday. The tradition is also listed as UNESCO's intangible cultural heritage of humanity. The tug of war features some 40,000 bales of straw that were used to make the rope and it took 30 days for the rope weaving masters to make the huge rope the traditional way. As India celebrates the seventh day of Chet Navratri, devotees across the country gather to offer morning prayers to commence the seventh day of the nine day of Hindu festival. Hindu devotees also offered morning prayers on the occasion of Chaitra Chhat festival on Monday. Chaiti Chhat festival is a four-day festival observed during the Chaitra month of the Hindu lunar calendar and is dedicated to worshipping sun and is consort Chati Maya, the goddess of dawn. Thousands of Cambodians and foreign tourists celebrated the Khmer New Year in capital Phnom Penh on Saturday with songs, dance and a lot of water. Large crowds of mostly young men and women, some armed with water guns, gathered at the stage in front of what more historical resort. The New Year festivity is also celebrated in Thailand, Laos and Myanmar and falls at the hottest time of the year when temperatures can also climb above 40 degrees Celsius. Paris's Notre Dame Cathedral is slowly regaining its iconic visage after nearly five years of reconstruction work following a massive fire that heavily damaged its roof and led its spire to crumble. Some 500 workers are present on the site every day, racing to rebuild the cathedral, Europe's most visited monument before the fire that has dominated the Isle du La site, island on the river Seine since the Middle Ages. French President Emmanuel Macron has said the restoration work is on schedule with the Notre Dame Cathedral slated to reopen to the public on the 8th of December this year. A revised version of Sunset Boulevard, the musical based on 1950s film and its leading actress Nicole were among the big winners at the Olivia Awards on Sunday, picking up seven prizes at Britain's top theatre ceremony. London's National Theatre won three awards, including the Best New Play for Dear England and Best Actor for Mark Gattis in The Motive and The Cue. The glitchy chaos that was a major turn-off during Crime's highly anticipated Coachella set wasn't part of the performance art. She too issued an apology to her fans due to severe technical failure in the middle of her set. The celebratory mood of Billy Joel's historic 100th Medicine Square Garden concert took a sore turn as the legendary pianist belted out his signature ballet Piano Man, CBS decided to cut short the event, upsetting people on social media. On Sunday, Keisha surprised the audience by joining Vinny's WAP performance midway. During her rendition of the 2010 hit song TikTok, she also altered the opening lyrics in a way that left the audience stunned. The two men who fired gunshots outside residence uh, of uh, Bollywood actor Salman Khan in Mumbai on Sunday are suspected to be from Haryana's Gurugram and belong to gangster Lawrence Bishnoi's gang. Akshay Kumar and Tiger Shroff's latest release called Pade Mia Chote Mia is about to join the 100 crore rupees club. The film has minted 96 crore rupees in worldwide collections. Surya surprised his fans on Sunday by sharing a new poster from his upcoming film Kanguva with director Shiva. He shared the poster on social media confirming that he will play a double role in the film. The first single from Venkat Prabhu's upcoming film, The Greatest of All Time, titled Whistle Polu, was released on Sunday. Starring Vijay in the lead role, the song also sees him turning singer for the Peppy number. Bollywood actor Vicky Kaushal took to his Instagram stories and shared a video of him having Pani Puri. His genuine reaction melted the hearts of internet users and fans. 
Bayer Leverkusen clinched its first ever Bundesliga title on Sunday, ending Bayern's, Bayern Munich's streak of 11 consecutive championships following a commanding 5-0 victory over Werder Bremen. In Premier League, Liverpool's Premier League title hopes suffered a huge blow as they were beaten by 1-0 at Anfield by Crystal Palace. Arsenal followed Liverpool by slipping up on their own patch as Aston Villa's victory allowed Man City to go on the top of the points table of Premier League. Runaway leader Inter Milan will hope to clinch its 20th Italian league title in the Milan Derby despite being held to a late 2-2 draw by struggling Calgary in Serie A on Sunday. Napoli's aspirations for a top-four finish in Serie A were dealt by a blow on Sunday when they were held to a 2-2 draw at home by relegation-threatened Frizonen. Stefan Tsitsipas clinches his third Monte Carlo Masters trophy in four years with a commanding 6-1, 6-4 victory over Casper Ruud on Sunday. Chennai Super Kings defeated Mumbai Indians by 20 runs in IPL El Clasico at the Vankiri Stadium. American world number one Scotty Scheffler dominated a back-to-back -back nine shootout to capture his second Masters title, taking a four-stroke victory at Augusta National. India's Vidit Kujarati pulled off another upset over world number three Hikaru Nakamura in round number nine of the candidates' chess tournament. India's Anju and Harshita helped India win two silver medals on Sunday at the Asian Wrestling Championship 2024 in Bishkek, Kyrgyzstan. And with this, it's a wrap here on Express News for now. But news and updates will continue here on DD India. So don't go anywhere. Keep watching and keep tracking DD India for all latest news and updates from the country and the world. Thank you so much for joining us right now. Namaskar.